The reason I'm here is to introduce you to this year's recipient of the Excellence in Contribution Award, my friend Phyllis. And let me tell you a little bit about Phyllis. Um, you can read her, her biography you know, in the program book. She was born in Omaha, Nebraska, and the daughter of Mexican immigrants. Impressively, she's gone from there to the White House of the United States and everything in between. Phyllis is now the founder of Conexion, a mentoring program like no other in the country. She will tell you more about it. And I chose a few little adjectives for Phyllis um, to spell out her name. P stands for passionate. Whether she meets an individual in need, and I've seen her meet someone on Friday and then spends the next three weeks helping them out, um, she dives into it with immense passion. H stands for hardworking. I've collaborated with her on many projects, and once she is committed, she lives and breathes it. She will call, she will email, she get other people to call you. It doesn't stop. Um, y stands for youth. There's, there's no one that I know who understands more and explains to me more and drill, drills into me more that the next generation is what matters, especially the under 10 year old. 10 years old, which is why her career started in education, and her belief that we need to feed the pipeline with educated Latino children, and she fights for that every day. Um, L stands for loyal. She's fiercely loyal to the Latino community. She helps out women. She collaborates with other minorities on our common issues. But her dreams are, and aspirations are almost always centered around how do we improve the lives of Latinos? Mi gente. And I stands for intense. She's intense in, in the case of depth. Her passions are not to create just a mentoring program, but to create a program that will impact that person, their family, and their community. S is just for plural of all of the above. <laughs> uh, please join me in welcoming my good friend, Phyllis. Wow, uh, I'm re really touched. I gave Carol a ride home last night. She says, what can we say about the letter P? And I said, I don't know what you can say about the letter P, so thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm deeply touched by that, um, uh, but your remarks. Oh, wow. Um, first, I'd like to thank the women of Alpha for this honor, because it truly is an honor. Uh, I would agree that the work that Alpha has done and in particular women of Alpha, to really provide the kind of visibility that our community needs is phenomenal. And to be honored by all of you means a great deal to me. And also for the recognition that we share, and I think this is so important, the idea of helping each other, that organizations such as Alpha, Conexion, other professional organizations, that we help each other up, give a hand up, and acknowledge each other. And to that end, I'd like to acknowledge the members of Conexion who are here tonight, because I wouldn't be standing there if it weren't for all of you. So I know you guys hate this, but would you do me a favor and just stand up? Our mentors, our mentees, our board, and our sponsors, if you would, please stand up. Don't be shy. Raul, where are you? Good. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Thank all of you. It's, it's a big and growing community, and I, I love all of you. I also want to acknowledge my niece who's here tonight, uh, and I was telling Agatha last night at dinner, <laughs> Laura Barajas, my niece, is graduating this year. And Laura, if you would just stand up or wave or something, thank you. Um, she's, going to be a, she's going to go on scholarship to the School of the Art Institute of Chicago, and so when I told her about this event tonight, as happy as she is for me, she really wanted to meet Agatha. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, no, I said, no, it's true, I'm sorry. But anyway, so um, I'm going to move on to my remarks because I know we have a sign here, I'm going to stay to time. Um, I was asked to share my own journey, what my journey was. 
and how my work helps others achieve their dream. I always feel like Mike Dukakis, our former governor, who would always start his speeches by saying, I'm a son of an immigrant. Well, I'm a daughter of an immigrant, as Carol said, a Mexican immigrant. He came with the clothes on his back, speaking no English. Um, he worked in the uh, cornfields of Nebraska as a migrant. Uh, then he moved on to the killing floors of the packing houses in Omaha, Nebraska, and eventually got into construction and real estate and started his own business. As a result of that, uh, he would take me with him when he would look at properties that he wanted to buy and so forth. And so we'd go to the courthouse to look at what was available, and people would start speaking to Daddy really loud, and I would say to them, he has an accent, he isn't deaf. <laughs> I don't know why people do that, it makes me crazy. But then he would turn to me, and say, Iha, you have to educate the people. You have to help them understand. So I was thinking about tonight, I was thinking, my dad's words have lived with me all this time. I've had many great experiences, I've had a wonderful career, and I've been able, as Carol said, to work at the, uh, in the White House, the Clinton administration, I was a deputy assistant secretary, worked at Harvard as the first Latino uh, assistant dean there. And so I remembered his words about you have to educate the people because I was always this odd person hanging around. Um, so I want to tell you a little story about my work at Harvard. Uh, one of my colleagues, Jean Hood, who is, now the dep who is now the assistant dean, or excuse me, the vice president of human resources in Texas at the University of Texas, said the one thing she remembered about working for me at Harvard was that we would go to meetings to which we were not invited. And, and she said, I always remembered you did that. And I said, if we waited to be invited, we'd never go anywhere. It's, it's human resources. Who invites human resources to meetings? Uh, it's true. Uh, so, and this is a tip, folks. The other thing that you do when you go to meetings that, to which you're not invited, at Harvard, they're very polite. So it was rare that anybody would tell you to leave. Very, very rare. So occasionally, you grow a thick skin, it's OK. But what we did that was good is we demonstrated our value and became integral to the leadership team. And that's what we're doing now in Conexion. Uh, people like Carol, like Inez Stewart and others, Bob Edwards and others, uh, Raul Medina. The reason it's called Conexion, by the way, and spelled the way it's spelled is because Raul said, Madrina, you have to spell it this way. So it's C-O-N-E-X-I-O-N, so take it up with Raul, but at any rate. Um, but what we're doing in Conexión is finding, identifying, and shining a light on our very talented Latino community. I am passionate about that. It, it, it really hurts me to think that sometimes people don't appreciate all that we have to contribute to this country. So we've had the chance in the last few years to bring together people, peer-to-peer, -peer, a lot of Latino professionals who are the only one at their level in their organizations. Many of the people who've gone through Conexión say, I'm by myself, I have no one else to relate to. So Conexion gives them that community to relate to over the course of a year. Our mentors and our mentees, many of our mentors are not Latinos. I'm going for executives. There aren't that many Latino executives out there yet, but we're providing that pipeline. So a lot of our mentors end up gaining, I mean, they're obviously providing great value to our mentees, but they're also giving our mentees our mentees are giving them great insight into the community, and they're learning a great deal about who we are and what we have to offer. The next thing I was asked to talk about was I was asked to speak about what I've done to achieve my dreams. And the reality is my dreams are about you achieving your dreams. And it makes me happy every single time a new class of Conexión starts. And by the end of the program, all the wonderful things that have happened and what you've done since you've left the program. And we continue, every group I keep saying they can't get any better, but they do. I want to leave you with one suggestion, one lesson. As my father said, I have to educate the people. It's my job, OK? So my suggestion to you is, and this is something that I heard a few weeks ago at the ACER conference in Washington, DC, and was from one of uh, Carol Sanchez's cousins, Leslie Sanchez. No, they're not related. Um, she's a former CNN political commentator. And the only reason I asked Carol, she's a Republican. And I said, well, you must be related to Carol. But no, not the case. So <laughs> hey, what can I say? I'm a Democrat, but we love each other anyway. Um, <laughs> So anyway, the panel was, and I love this title, I want to think about it, Leading with Intention. And she used the acronym CARE, which I've adapted for this evening. And CARE stands for competency, be knowledgeable, have command of your skills and abilities, and be really good at what you do. You have 100% control over that. You do. Think about it. 
authenticity. We must bring our authentic selves to our work, to our organizations, our leadership. The U.S. Census tells us that will be, the, uh, will be the largest segment of the workforce now and in the foreseeable future. We need to let everyone understand and experience how our Latino sensibilities add value, because they do. Reliability. Be a person of your word, which means knowing when to say yes and keep your commitments, and as important, know when to say no. Lastly, excellence. Always strive to exceed your last best effort. And that's also from my dad. So thank you for a night that I will always remember. <laughs>